When you talk about ancient history, you think of cave dwellers banging rocks together to make fire, or just a vague notion of people farming for food. But that is about to change. Once you start taking a deeper look into the lives of people that came before us, we can find that they had an intellect that is strikingly similar, and in many cases, superior to ours. Don't believe me? Well, strap in for the ride of a lifetime because what we're about to tell you is sure to leave your mind blown. Humans have always looked to the sky in wonder. To the ancients, the heavens were something that remained hopelessly out of reach, an object that they could only fantasize about and never really reach. The sky represented something that would remain an object of desire, and yet tantalizingly beyond their grasp. Or so it is, we're taught. As it turns out, the ancient people not only had an understanding of the heavens, but judging by the accounts we have left from those days, they actually had the means to travel across those heavens. Let's take a look back at these ancient forms of air travel that have been kept hidden from us. A mighty steel and bronze behemoth that climbs up to the heavens and moves freely across the skies with weapons of a deadly nature. If you think what I'm talking about is a modern bomber, you're 2,500 years too late. The words we just spoke about were the ancient flying devices mentioned in the sacred Vedic texts of India. And as one of the oldest religious texts, the descriptions are eerily similar to modern spacecraft. These vimanis, as they were called in texts, were not just products of fanciful imagination. Oh no, these machines were the prime of advancement designed to carry the gods from the heavens. And if you think it's just a one-off description, think again. The Vimanas are featured not just in one, but every single Vedic text. And once you start reading, it plays out more like a scene from Star Wars than a religious text from pre-Christian times. There are details of heavenly flights with Vimanas destroying others, of the methods of propulsion used with no apparent runways required. Most importantly, all these texts heavily feature an element of mercury, which is used to drive these machines. What is remarkable is that scientists at NASA are using that same element in their new propulsion system. It certainly is interesting that we're just discovering what the ancients knew centuries ago. And once you come a bit closer to home, we have one of the most radical accounts of flying machines that you have never heard of. In the Ethiopian sacred text, the Kebra Nagast, which translates to the glory of kings, there are accounts after accounts of King Solomon's flying chariot that carried him everywhere to the ends of the earth. In these societies, the term flying carpet was used as a blanket term for all flying objects. But once you get beyond the subtext, we find that the origins of these aircraft may have been extraterrestrial in nature. This tells us that our ancestors certainly did have some contact with intelligent life forms from the heavens and made notes of the miracles they witnessed. And in these accounts, we find the locations that these flying carpets of Solomon used to land. Most particular is a mountain range where all the peaks have apparently been shaved off to create a plain surface. Were these the landing sites for extraterrestrial visitors or a work of our ancestors? There needs to be a lot more research. And returning back to Hindu texts, we find even more instances of technology that is eerily similar to our modern weapons, the flaming arrows of Vishnu, which sought out their targets even at great distances. The Seven Arrows of the Demon King, which divided further to attack multiple enemies. The flying chariots that have been referenced throughout. All these point to an inescapable conclusion that some form of aircraft and advanced warfare technology existed 2,500 years ago. So, what was it that inspired these people? Did we have visitors from the great beyond? Or did some cataclysmic event lead to all of this being destroyed and referenced only in myth? We just don't know yet. All we know is that there's a lot more that we have to figure out about our history. So that's it for this video, folks. Do let us know your views on this in the comment section below. Subscribe and share for more interesting videos.